Ooh. Uh, okay. Video storage drives. Here we go. All right, guys, we're back. Part two of how to build a video editing computer and what you need to consider. Today, we're talking about video editing storage drives uh, for backup or for media sources or for anything like that. Scratch, scratch drives, um, where to put your OS and programs. As with the last video, the product links are in the description. So there are two types of storage drives. You got the solid state drives, which are very quick. They read and they write very fast, but they're more expensive per megabyte and gigabyte. Then you have the hard drives, they're mechanical drives. There's actually something spinning on them with a little, you know, read or a little needle constantly reading. Those are the drives that go That's the best hard driving impression I can do. Then within the hard drive realm, you have the internal and the external. These are actually 7200 RPM drives, but they also had 5400 RPM drives for laptops and stuff before solid state really took off. And then you have the external drives, uh, maybe a Western Digital MyBook, you have uh, Lacey uh, design drives like this, and then you also have GTEC drives, and these are a little more high-end. These are actually designed specifically for video applications. Connections that you'll utilize with internal drives are almost exclusively SATA connections that go directly to your motherboard. External drives can plug in via USB 3.0, and you also have eSATA, you have Thunderbolt, you have probably USB-C coming out. Bunch of different connections for the externals, but let's start with what I have internally here. My solid state drives are right here. I have two of them. Now, what I like about this particular R5 case is that your drives go in these nice convenient little trays here that slide back in. I have the top drive, which is my OS and programs. It's a one terabyte solid state drive from Samsung. It's the 850 EVO. 850 EVO at the time of purchasing, which was sometime, I guess maybe six months before I made this video, uh, was the, the best price economically for price per megabyte for a solid state drive in terms of also performing well. So my, my operating system, Windows 10, plus all my programs, Premiere, um, you know, After Effects, any games I wanted to install, all of that is on that top one terabyte solid state drive. Then I have a 500 gigabyte solid state drive, same type of drive, Samsung 850 Evo. Now this drive is where all of my footage exports to. So if I'm rendering out a video, all those render files, all the exports, all the media cache from Premiere is also going directly to that solid state drive. Whether or not those exports stay there forever or not is whether I want to clear out some space on that or not. Now below that I have five uh, hard drives. They're all Western Digital Blacks. So from top to bottom we have a four terabyte Western Digital Black hard drive. And it's plugged in right there and that's actually serving as my backup to all my footage. So when I drop all my footage into my media source drive, I also just make it a habit immediately to drop it all into this four terabyte drive as well. And once this fills up, I just take it out and replace it with another. Um, right now, I actually have my previous backup four terabyte drive just right here. So between here, I have eight terabytes of backup. So if you want to get a little more complicated and a little more safe, you could store things online or in external hard drives, store them off site, um, so just in case you have a flood or a fire. Now the bottom three here are Western Digital Black hard drives, but each one is two terabytes. So two, two, and two. So all total, I have six terabytes here in RAID 0. It shows up as one volume on my computer. When I shoot a video on my camera, pull the SD card out, plug it into my computer, I drop the footage into this RAID array and this backup immediately. That's the first thing I do with the footage. Now the important thing you have to remember when you are setting up a drive situation for video editing is you don't want one drive to be doing one more than one thing. You want one drive to be reading, which would be your media source drive for instance. You want one drive to be writing, which would be your export location or your media cache or something like that. And you can see that a six terabyte uh, RAID 0 with hard drives is a much more economical but still very, very fast solution to media sourcing than using a solid state that's six terabytes or to use a hard drive that's six terabytes. Now one thing about RAID systems is 
there are different classes of RAID systems. One, two, five, ten. Uh, I use RAID Zero like this because I have a backup solution. So RAID Zero is actually a little risky if that's your, your primary drive. The information, the media, or whatever you put on it, is spread across the drives. And so one file is actually contained on all three drives as pieces. So if one drive fails, all three drives fail. That's what sucks. But the benefit of RAID Zero is that because all three drives are spinning together and reading together, it reads almost three times as fast. That's what you want for 4K footage or beyond. You want something to be reading very, very quickly. Now RAID 1 is also an option, and that's actually, that, that introduces redundancy. That means that when, this is one volume, when I actually drop footage into it, it'll be written onto in full here, and here, and here, three times. That means that if I lose one of these drives, the other drives pick up the slack. That's a good thing about RAID 1, but there are no speed benefits to RAID 1. So as long as you have a backup, you can use RAID 0, but never use RAID 0 as a backup. Now, I don't actually have a RAID controller, like hardware controller, inside the computer. I actually went through the disk management and was able to partition off in RAID 0 those three hard drives and still get some awesome read and write speeds. Now, all my previous hard drives that don't fit in here, they go back into their original anti-static bags, and I actually save these, and I know I, I've marked each one to see what it is, so I can open it up, and I can see that, oh, this is 2014, 2015 footage. It's also the boot drive for Windows 7. So if I lost all my info on Windows 10, where I had a crash or a virus, I could actually take that solid state drive out and I could put in this old hard drive and boot up Windows 7 in an instant. So as you see in my computer here, uh, these are my drives, the backup right here, which is uh, one of the four terabyte drives that I mentioned earlier. The OS and programs are right here. It says Windows 7 because it used to be a Windows 7 before I upgraded to 10. Uh, the Media G RAID is actually the external dual GTEC RAID 0 that I showed earlier. This is the 500 gigabyte scratch export disk, and this is the six terabyte RAID 0 array where all my media lies. My scratch disks are all on my S drive, which is my scratch drive, and they're Adobe Media Cache. I took them out of the common files on the uh, OS and programs hard drive, which is where it normally is, and I put it into the scratch disk. The scratch disk is also where the final videos are exported. Now this is a mobile detailing company a commercial that I put together and it's in 4K, full playback resolution. You can really see that I can scrub through just fine with the 4K footage. Back and forth. So if you're wanting to edit and you want to make sure that you can uh, edit smoothly with 4K footage, the setup I have with my computer really gets the job done. The other solution you could do if you didn't have enough space or you're running off a laptop is to work with external drives. And there are a lot of different options, but there are a few really good companies that I enjoy. Um, so let's start with a very basic model that you probably want to avoid. This is Western Digital MyBook. It is uh, something that you would probably only want to use if you were backing up Word documents. <laughs> Um, it's actually a USB 2.0 drive as well, so yeah, this is actually trash for me. Next step up would be a USB 3.0. This is a uh, Lacey drive, and I think it's three terabytes, and it runs pretty well. And honestly, if you had a laptop or something, and this was your only external drive, and maybe you are more of a mobile video editor, and uh, you edit in hotel rooms and stuff, hey, this actually works not so bad for backup and for limited video editing on the fly. Now this is GTEC and I actually have a little piece of tape to cover the light because I hate to see this thing flashing at me all the time. But this is a G Technology uh, four terabyte external drive and uh, it, it's really good. Um, it's fast for being one drive. I, I've always appreciated that, but also it's hardy. This thing, um, I've dropped it before. Actually, I've dropped it right off the shelf and uh, it still works. <laughs> this particular one connects with Firewire, which I don't use, but it connects with eSATA as well. And if you were to watch my previous video, you'll know 
that my motherboard has an eSATA port. And I bought that motherboard specifically because my hard drives here, my external hard drives, have that eSATA function. Finally, my favorite drive by GTEC that I own. Um, there are more expensive drives, but this is actually a dual drive. There are two in here, and each one is two terabytes. And together they make a RAID 0. And the RAID 0 here can be accessed via eSATA like this, like the previous one. And this is actually really fast. It writes pretty quickly. Um, not quite as fast as uh, maybe two hard drives in RAID 0 internally in your computer, but I still have always appreciated this. I've also dropped this one once and uh, it still works. So as part two of this two-part idea, I think that I've kind of illustrated what it's like to build a computer to $2,500 maybe, maybe $3,000, maybe $2,000, depending on where you buy and what time you're watching this video. As with the last video, all the product links are in the video description. Check that out and uh, give me a subscribe if you like the video. Give me a like and comment if you got something to say or you have a question. Uh, and until next time, happy editing guys.